chest, ladies and gentlemen. Man, I appreciate you guys very much for stopping by. So I'm pretty happy. Earlier today, my, my 49ers hat came through. For those of you who don't know, I've been a 49ers fan my entire life. Used to watch games with my mom. So, man, it's kind of in me from childhood. So, yeah, man. Um, anyways, uh, we do have uh, the Chess 960 Fisher Random World Championship going on right now. Uh, so, uh, we are playing the knockout portion. So, I do have a Wesley So uh, versus Sorvar Gretzson, uh from Iceland. Uh, so, yeah, man, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pretty exciting game. It has a lot of little subtleties in it and stuff like that. But um, So, for my people in the Philippines, I will say my buhay to you. Uh, it is morning, so maganang umaga, maganang kapon, because it is going to be getting afternoon really, really shortly here, about an hour and something. Anybody who is coming from Iceland, um, I will say hello. Uh, and uh, tak fittish. Uh, for those of you that are coming from Iceland, I appreciate you guys stopping by very much. But yeah, man, if you guys are ready to go, let's take a look and see what we got for this game, homie. So we got E4, E6, D4, D5. So, you know, trying to make it as regular as possible, we do have, uh, you know, something that's, that resembles a French defense. But of course, the pieces are jumbled up in all different kinds of ways. Uh, so we cannot make that be a true French. Uh, so we do see the move G3. We're preparing to take this pawn with the queen. So the pawn takes E4, queen takes E4, and then bam, knight to F6. Always logical. Uh, if the queen uh, for your opponent does decide to try to reside in the center of the board, try to see if you can attack it with a knight or a bishop, uh, and it will run away crying. <laughs> I mean, not necessarily, but you get what I mean, son. Queen goes back to E2. We got knight to C6, or bishop to C6. Knight to b3. Sorry, knight to b6 is such more natural for me to say, so that's why I like messed up. <laughs> I'm like, knight to, knight to c6. Never mind. Uh, so we do see knight to b3, knight to b6. We got knight up to f3. Uh, we got bishop taking f3, queen taking f3. Uh, we do have bishop to e7. Uh, the knight goes to a5. And you can see, uh, you know, this is actually something that's pretty common. Uh, when we have to develop knights on kind of these two squares, uh, it is pretty easy to put a knight on a5 or maybe h5 or, you know, one of these two squares. Uh, because I mean, you know, we got a little bit of pressure going on. This bishop is going to come to g2. You know, we might be throwing some lights out coming up. So we do see queen over to e8. We got bishop down to g2, and you see that the pressure is pretty tremendous. Uh, you know, we uh, we had to make sure that we covered this square as black because uh, if you know the bishop came here, the queen did not cover this square. Uh, you know, we definitely can't go here because the knight would just sacrifice. Knight taking uh, pawn taking back and queen going here would be an epaulet mate. For those of you that is not familiar with that, that is one of the checkmate patterns. Uh, you know, there's many different, you know, a couple dozen checkmate patterns we have in the game of chess. Rooks on either side of the king with the king kind of suffocated in the middle with the queen right here is an epaulette's mate. Uh, but anyways, uh, we do see the move queen to a4. Uh, we are still maintaining uh, that square with the queen. Uh, and we are attacking this knight that's lonely over here on the uh, rim of the board. So we do see knight taking b7. And I mean... You know, White is actually kind of already winning uh, in this particular situation. Uh, you know, they have managed to win a pawn for absolutely free. Uh, and, I mean, you know, White is just in a really, really dominant position right here. So, you know, but you guys know it's a roller coaster, homie. So, we got to see what's rolling. So, the rook does go to d5. So, this is the absolute best way to defend. Uh, so, Greterson uh, does defend the exact right way. What we are doing with plugging this knight, uh, this rook in the middle of the board, we are disconnecting the queen from this knight. So, now the knight has to kind of do something about its life because it's made a life decision. So, the knight does go back to c5. We got bishop taking c5, pawn taking c5, rook taking c5. Uh, and then we do have the bishop uh, going over to f3. It was also possible to swing queen over here because at the moment, this pawn is kind of hit, so you kind of want to defend that a little bit. <sighs> so we do see bishop to c3. Like I said, knight uh, b goes to d5. Uh, and, I mean, everything looks like really, really even. White definitely has a slight edge. But, I mean, you know, both players are fairly safe with their king. Uh, you know, we do have pretty much all our pieces out for black. The same thing for white. So, I mean, you know, both players are pretty much doing what they need to do. The pawns are equal. Uh, so, I mean, everything is kind of everything. So we do see, uh, you know, short castles by black. And it's crazy because this is still short castle. But look at this. I just I just think this is so funny. Those of you that watched my video before, like, I was just, like, cracking up about this, man. It's like, look how far this king jumps across the board. It's crazy. Uh, queen does take A2 because we just went ahead and knocked that pawn off the board. Uh, so at the moment, black does have an extra pawn. 
uh, we do see rook over to a1 so we do get some play you know for that pawn uh, we do see bishop taking f6 knight taking f6 and we do see the move c3 we kind of had to you know take care of this pawn that's down here uh, the we do see the move a5 just protecting the pawn uh, we see rook f to d1 and then we have a rook up uh, to d5 uh, and basically what you're looking at here is you are up a pawn as black but you are kind of down a bishop so you do have the inferior minor piece so i mean that's literally why it looks like it's dead even even though black is up an entire pawn uh, because like i said this knight is not as good as this bishop uh you are you have an open position with the bishop so i mean that's why you can't always just say like one minor piece is better than the other you know you have to depend on the position uh, so we do see bishop down to f1 attacking this queen uh the queen does go over to e4 you know black i mean even though it's dead pretty dead even black does kind of want to trade because i mean they do have you know some extra material uh so the queen does take e4 knight takes e4 we got rook taking d5 pawn taking d5 we got bishop to h3 we check king goes to b7 and then we have one our pawn back by rook taking a5 and uh magically black is actually in a really nice position uh you know the, I would say the thing about it is the king is possibly going to get into a more dominant position than the white king um, at the moment. And because this knight is here, it is kind of tying, you know, black down to the protection of this f2 pawn. A uh, little something something. So we do see the move c6. Uh, we got bishop up to f5. We'd really love to eliminate this knight. The knight's a little bit annoying in the center of the board. So we do see knight to d2. We got king up to g2. We got the move h6. We got rook down to a4. So we are basically telling the knight if it ever wants to come back and live on this square, it's not going to live for very long, son. It's going to get killed. So we do see uh, the knight going to c4. We got uh, b3. We got knight up to d6 attacking this lonely bishop over here. Bishop goes back to d3. And this is something visually that you should pay attention to uh, because if you ever find a knight on the side of the board, this is the exact position that you want to be in because as you can see, this knight doesn't really have the ability to come to any of these squares. So just visually, you know, rotate it however you need to rotate it and that's what the situation is. So we do see the move C5, we got king up to F3, we got king down to C6, we got rook up to A6 with check. And we're hoping, you know, that the king just like forgets that it loves its knight and goes here and then we win and then the game is over. <laughs> but we don't see that, man. We see rook down to b6. Uh, we got rook down to a3. We got the move c5, c4. Pawn takes c4, pawn takes c4, and this does kind of inconvenience the bishop a little bit. We do see bishop to e4 with check, and we are not worried. This just kind of helps us improve our position of our king if we see knight taking and then the king taking, uh, and then we're good to go. We do see the king going to c5. Uh, we see rook up to a7. I mean, this is, even though it's slightly better for black, I mean, this is a pretty beneficial area for this rook to be on uh, because you are hitting these pawns that are on this seventh rank. As you guys know, a pig on a seventh. We do see a knight down to b5, a counter attacking this pawn down here. We got rook taking f7. And instead of going knight taking c3, which is, I mean, it's definitely a good move. Uh, you know, we automatically immediately see uh, the rook going to f6 with check, rook taking and then pawn taking, uh, and then the king does go to g4, and then we do see knight taking c3. Of course, there was no way to, you know, protect that pawn anyway, uh, but, you know, black, I mean, it's, it's deadly even, like I said, but, I mean, we do have a nice little pass pawn here for black, so you gotta kind of take some care, you know, if you're white playing the game. So we do see the bishop going back down to c2. Uh, and I mean, it's a little bit of a different visual, but I mean, the bishop is kind of dominating the knight just a little bit more. Of course, the king is able to kind of swing in. I mean, you can see something like this coming into the situation. So the bishop is not gonna be able to live there for very long, but you see the visuals that I'm showing you with the bishop versus knight. Uh, so the king does go to d4. We got king up to h5, we got knight up to e4. We got the move f4 and then we have the move f5 which this is actually a really interesting move uh because it makes it uh it pretty much impossible to take this knight in the middle of the board uh simply because if you take it the pawn is going to take back and this pawn is super super close to promoting uh so just to give you guys an example let's say the king takes h6 and you got king going to c3 this is what we actually saw in the game but let's say that instead of going bishop to a4 which is what the most suggested move in the position is let's say you just take a bishop here uh of course, it's not the same in every single position, but you have to be paying attention uh, to the individual position and, you know, do some calculations. So if you calculate this position, bishop will be taking e4, pawn will be taking e4. So you, in your calculation, you would probably see that the queen, you queen at the same time for, for white and for black, right? So we got the pawns going up, right? So we queen at the same time. So it seems like everything is everything. But the major thing that you have to be thinking about 
for white is that black is in a much better position pawn wise. Uh, so after the queen would go to e3 with check, something like the king would go to g7 and then the king going down to d2. And you can see that this pawn uh, is in a much different position space place than this pawn is uh so you are going to have a more dominant position and that is just specific to this position so just a little stuff you have to calculate in given position so we do see the move king to c3 and then we do see the move bishop to a4 like i said in the game we do have king down to d2 we got the move h4 we got to get rolling bro if you're white for real uh so we do see the move c3 we got h5 we got knight up to c5 attacking this bishop poor bishop man so we have reached the point in the game that if you don't want to pause the video there are two possible moves that you can play in this position to try to hold any possibility of surviving this game if you're white. If you want to go ahead and pause the video and try to guess those, go ahead and do so. Okay, so if you guys thought that you need to save the bishop, then that is a blender. Uh... Moving the bishop at all completely loses the game. Uh, this pawn is way too close to promoting. These pawns are nowhere close to promoting. You would just be in a completely lost end game. So the move is actually either king to g5 or king to g6. It is the same exact thing. You have to go over this pawn, go for this pawn number one, and you have to get out of the way of this pawn number two. Uh, you're pretty much having to give up the bishop two different ways. Either you, you let the knight take it right here, or you just allow the, the, the pawn to go to c2, and then you give up the bishop that way. So we do see knight taking a4, we got the move h6, we got c2, h7, c1 equals queen, and then h8 equals queen. So, you know, even though you do have an extra piece as black, it's not like you're just overwhelmingly winning the game. You do have a definite edge, but I mean, it's still a game, and that's why we're still playing, son. The knight goes to c5, we see king taking f5, and I mean, these two pawns are actually kind of equal this knight, though. As interesting as it sounds in this type of an end game. So uh, we do see the queen going to c2 with check. The king coming down to g4. And like I said, white has a lot of potential. The queen goes to g6. The king goes over to h4. Uh, now we do not have any more checks going on. The knight does come to e4. We see the move g4. Uh, because of course, I mean, this was a mating situation. If you let the queen check here. Uh, and I mean, continue checking. And then you can get into this scenario. You cannot be losing your pawns on me. So we do see the move g4. King goes to e3. Uh, we see the move g5, and then we see the move queen to f5. And this is the, actually, if you are white, this is actually a very suffocating looking position uh, because this queen is going down uh, to, uh, you know, attack this pawn. And I mean, you know, like it's pretty lights out coming up, man. I mean, it's just not looking too great, man. So I will pause the video for a second time. There is only one saving move that you can play in this position. So if you want to pause the video and try to guess that move, go ahead and do so. All right, man, like I said, there is only one move you can play in this position to have any hope whatsoever. Uh, and I actually think it's a little bit hard to find because you have so many different moves that you can play. Automatically, if you are white, you're thinking of protecting this, this pawn. Uh, and the only way to actually do that is by going queen to e5. There's two things about this move, and I will get into get into them in a minute, but let me finish the game up real quick. Wesley So actually went queen to b8, and it is very unfortunate because this actually mates Wesley So. So we see the move queen to h7 with check, the king goes to g4, we see knight down to f2 with check, queen, king goes to g3, and then queen to h3 is checkmate, and this ends the game. So, uh, you know, Gretersen does win this uh, game and this round. And so, like I said, getting back to this move queen to e5, the problem with queen to b8 was it did defend that pawn, but the problem was it still allowed the knight to move, and that is the only reason why this is a lost position. So backing up, if we went queen to e5 instead, not only are we uh, offering a queen trade, which black does not want because, I mean, they need more than a knight to win the game, right? But you are also pinning this knight down to this king, and it is a very subtle, like, you know, uh, nuance of the position, you know, detail of the position. Uh, but you have to do that because, like I said, you know, this knight has to be pinned to the king because if it moves, you're getting mated, right? So if we went forward in this position, let's say we still had queen to h7 with check, right? The king can just slide over to g4. And I mean, 
this crucial check is not available because this knight is pinned down. So like I said, this is the absolute, you know, important thing. Plus, in the position that we had before, this queen is cutting off this diagonal. So that is why the queen, the, the king cannot step up once this knight does check. So it's a complete box that he's put in. Uh, so after this, you might see the queen coming down to h2, but then king going to f5. And I mean, what do you do about this king, this knight? This knight is getting, I mean, you don't want to go into any trades like you know you don't want to you know like lose this piece because i mean this is a really important piece if you lose this piece then white basically just has two pawns and a queen to your queen like this is just not an, a winnable thing so like i said we did see the move queen going over to b8 uh and this did not address this diagonal being covered by the queen uh and then also this knight's ability to move so this is what we ended up seeing it's almost identical but it's just that one detail that makes a difference checkmate and then going back queen to e5 you avoid the trade and you just simply step away from the danger so it's really crazy man especially somebody at wesley souls caliber missing the like those little details in the position uh i'm not sure if he was in time trouble or what but i mean it's crazy you got you know when you guys are playing chess and you got like 13 different moves you can make it's really really hard to separate which moves is good which moves are good and which moves are bad when they all look completely identical I don't know if you guys are like me, but man, sometimes I look at like four or five moves and I'm like, like, what's the difference, bro? Like, they all look the same, son. So <laughs> maybe you guys are better than me, man. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that is that game. So, uh, you know, taken from round uh, nine <clears throat> and I will be back shortly. I've got a little bit more time. I'm going to try to smash me down another video. So I appreciate you guys very much. Merit means salamat. Tak, finish. And I will see you guys. I think I said it. Yeah, I'll see you guys next time.